Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Environmental campaigners have won a notable victory in the Court of Appeal, which has ruled the government's decision to give the go-ahead to a third runway at Heathrow Airport was unlawful. The judges said that ministers had not taken their international climate change commitments into account. The government won't appeal, but Heathrow Airport has said it will challenge the judgment. Green campaigners have been celebrating and have called on the government to cancel the project outright. But supporters of the runway say that expansion is vital for Britain to compete on the international stage. Our correspondent Roger Harabin reports. In the sleet and cold, they massed outside the appeal court, hoping for a ruling that the government acted unlawfully by failing to take climate change into account when it approved the Heathrow expansion. The judge's ruling, when it came, was clear. The Secretary of State acted unlawfully in failing to take into account the Paris Agreement on Climate Change when deciding to designate the airport's national policy statement in support of the expansion of Heathrow Airport. The government acted unlawfully. It triggered scenes of jubilation outside. Well, the government's been told it's got to go away and think again. Um, if they want to resurrect the project, they will have to do a full and proper appraisal against all the climate change impacts over the full lifetime of the project. Um, and that's a pretty demanding uh, assessment to do. And I think it's pretty unlikely that Heathrow would scrape through that evaluation. But that's a matter for the government. But that hope may be premature. Since its opening in the 1950s, Heathrow has faced many setbacks to expansion, and normally it gets its own way in the end. Its supporters are not ready to give in. The way out now is for the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State to demonstrate that we want to be a proper trading nation and we want to be able to trade through our biggest port, and that means making whatever amendments need to be made as suggested by the courts today. That small amendment to factor in climate change is far from small, though. If the government does decide to reassess the third runway plan, it'll have to show how expanding aviation, our most polluting form of transport, is compatible with meeting its own laws on cutting emissions. We've said uh, we do want to see airport expansion, but, of course, critically, it has to match with our ambition, our commitment to be zero carbon by 2050. So those two things have to absolutely fit together. There's no way we can tackle climate change without ex Heathrow expansion to go ahead. I think this project is now dead. Boris Johnson, I think, knows that as well. This is a way in which Boris Johnson can get off the hook, drop the thing now. It's not yet clear how the government will react to the ruling. The eyes of the world will be on this judgment because its ramifications are potentially huge. It suggests that for every major infrastructure project planned by the government, there will have to be a clear demonstration that it fits with the government's own climate change laws. And that may often be a very difficult hurdle to cross. Well, we can speak to Roger now. Roger, a big victory for Green campaigners. Yes, it's a, a huge victory for them, although it's not quite clear what the total significance is. This decision does not mean that Heathrow is dead. It is, though, severely wounded. I mean, it's been quite categorically said by the judges that the Secretary of State was unlawful in proceeding with approval for the extra, the extra runway without first running it past government climate change laws. And it seems to me, just as I said in the piece now, this has implications for all sorts of infrastructure projects across the UK. So specifically about Heathrow, what happens now? Well, we need to wait and see whether Heathrow uh, themselves decide to appeal. At the, government, at the moment, the government has said it has no plans to appeal. It doesn't mean it won't. Um, but even if it doesn't uh, appeal, it could still go back to scratch and the government could try to make the argument that expanding Heathrow was compatible uh, with climate change targets. But frankly, what we know about climate change and aviation, that will be a very difficult case to make. OK. Roger. Many thanks. Roger Harabin there. Well, in a moment, we'll speak to our assistant political editor, Norman Smith. But first to our global business correspondent, Darshini David. And uh, Darshini, this probably won't be the last of it, will it? Because Heathrow Airport has said that it will appeal.
Indeed, Rita, and it's sort of saying that this judgment today is a hurdle to overcome, pointing out that Heathrow Airport has taken what it calls a lead in getting the UK aviation sector ready for net zero by 2050. And now it's quite clear why Heathrow wants to do this. The uh, boss of Heathrow is on record as saying to the BBC in the last couple of days, if we don't have Heathrow expansion, no Heathrow expansion, no global Britain. An exaggeration? Well, Heathrow is in actual fact our biggest port. 40% of our exports go through the airport and business groups have been backing up what the airport has been suggesting. Some saying this could hurt regional connectivity, it could hurt businesses when they're trying to get access to global markets and yes it is true you do need a sort of very smooth running logistics system when you're trying to expand overseas trade. But do all these theories hold water? Well all the studies in recent years have thrown up differing results when it comes to the economic benefits of a third runway and indeed the Department for Transport Transport's own figures over the last couple of years have suggested that perhaps we could see flights being diverted from other nearby airports, Birmingham, for example, Manchester, and that could actually hurt businesses outside of the South East. Now, today's reading, of course, isn't about the financial benefits. It's about the economic cost of that extra 260,000 flights. But it does underline that this is not business as usual when it comes to looking at how investment decisions will actually be weighed up. It's about the social cost overall, not just the economic benefits. And Norman in Westminster, a defeat for the government, but might there be quiet relief in Downing Street at this decision? A bit more than quiet relief. I think Boris Johnson will be doing a yes, come on, my son, because this decision really is a body blow for Heathrow Project, which Boris Johnson, as we know, threatened to lie down in front of the bulldozers to stop. And the significant thing today is, yes, Heathrow are appealing, but the government are not joining them in that appeal, which will fuel the very strong suspicion that Boris Johnson is quite comfortable for the courts to kill off a project which he has long opposed. Why? Because it gets him out of a hole of having to kibosh the project himself. In other words, from having to confront those many Tory MPs and the business community who strongly backed the project. Also, listening to Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, this morning. Yes, the government's in favour of aviation expansion and industry-led airport expansion. But did he say anything about a third runway? Nothing. Where does it leave us? Well, it's possible Heathrow could win their hearing at the Supreme Court. But think on this. Is it really credible to believe that Heathrow could still go ahead, even though it's a private project, that it could still go ahead without the full-throated support of the government? Not so sure about that. Norman, thank you. And thank you too to Darshini David. And if you want to know more about climate change and its effects, we have a very clear guide available on our website, and that's at bbc.co.uk forward slash news. The Prime Minister says he could walk 